Well, hello everyone. Uh, today uh, I thought I'd check my oil pressure uh, light and see what's going on uh, when I come up to a stop after it warms up. The oil light's been blinking. I'm not sure what's going on. The engine sounds great. Uh, I don't see any uh, change in the noise or anything. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to leave the oil uh, sending unit hooked up, but uh, what I've done, I uh, have rigged up a uh, oil pressure light. I'm going to hook into the block, and this one here uh, rigged right up to the pound, which is really uh, good. And you can see at the top there's 30 pounds. I know this um, 90, uh, see it says a 96, the 3 engines all the way up into the, uh, I guess, early 2000s read um, about 9 to uh, 6 pounds, I believe, at idle. Uh, when the temperature's warmed up, so I want to exactly see what's going on with that. Um, so most people just unhook the sending unit and and hook this right into it and just get a reading. But I want the light to come on, and also I want to see where this gauge is actually going because uh, if I can get a good idea where the gauge is going when the light comes on, then it'll determine if it's uh, sending units bad, or I've got an oil pump, or maybe some main bearings that are weak. But like I said, the motor runs great and everything. And it doesn't make any noise, so I'm not sure what's going on. But this will tell me today. And this is just your basic uh, setup. You know, you can buy these parts store, and this is a, I believe, a quarter inch uh, nipple down to a three eighths. And uh, of course, this will screw up, up in the block. Um, on this particular model, I did have to take off the uh, belt off the air conditioner. If the camera will focus there, um, and I had to pull the bracket off, and my uh, sending unit. Is actually, uh, let's see if you can see that, is actually right, let me get the light on, right there. Now, I want to leave that hooked up. Now, I looked on the block and I couldn't figure out where I could tap into the uh, oil port, and I found a place right there where I could tap into it, and this is why I had to move the uh, um, bracket for the air conditioning unit. So it was a little more work, but it'll be worth it for me to find out what's going on, and I had to take the plug out, and there's the plug sitting. And here is my uh, new plug that I'm going to be putting in. Just a nipple that I bought at the uh, um, Lowe's place, Lowe's store. And that'll screw in the uh, block up there, and I'll be able to get a reading on my oil pressure. So let me go ahead and hook this up, and we'll go ahead and start this up, let it warm up, and we'll see what's going on. And this is uh, will be a great way for me to find out what's going on. And I've always wanted to set up something like this. I have other gauges. Um, excuse me, all my parts laying out. You know, I had some uh, other gauges that read pretty good. Uh, some of these were a little too high. These are actually uh, air conditioning uh, gauges that uh, people do free on and so forth with in their vehicles. And there's an older gauge, uh, and you can see it's uh, pretty handy. Nice to keep all this stuff laying around because you never know when you need it. And uh, these hoses I'm using for the uh, uh, my line for the pressure is just stuff I've kept and I believe this is an old air conditioner, old Freon R32 uh, what's left of it uh, some hoses and stuff that I had and like I said I may just work pretty good so it looks like it should uh, be okay and uh, pressure reading should be pretty good so let me go ahead and hook this up stop talking here and we'll go ahead and see what's going on and uh, hopefully this will help some of you guys out all right, I got the car running, and it's up to about, uh, looks like, say, about 80 pounds right now. It's cold, which I would expect. As it warms up, it will drop off. And right now, my uh, temperature gauge, let me go ahead and turn my lights on there. Uh, temperature gauge right now is cold. So we'll see what happens. It'll take a little while for it to warm up, and I don't see any leaks. And if I give it a little bit of throttle, you'll probably see that gauge move while it's cold. It's still maxed out about 80 pounds right now, but it's dropping down, so we'll let this warm up and we'll check it. We'll see if we can get that light to come back on and hopefully figure out if it's the uh, sitting unit that's bad or actually something else. But like I said, the motor sounds really good, except for a little squeaky belt. It's not that the belt's bad. It's got a belt. It's got a, a place in the belt that's broke, and it's um, shifting the belt sideways, so I'm going to have to replace the uh, serpentine belt. All right, we'll uh, let this warm up, and we'll check it here in a few minutes. All right, a little update. It's uh, been running about uh, 10 minutes. The uh, temperature gauge now is starting to come up a little bit, and the gauge also has dropped. It's uh, down to about 45, 45 pounds. 
And you see when I give it some gas, it goes up pretty good. Now, now I know I'm before the oil pump and the regulator, but still this should give me an idea of what the oil pump is doing. If it's losing pressure or whatever, you can see it's slowly dropping there as it warms up. And I'll have to go in the house and get my phone. I've got the uh, numbers written down on idle and see where it's at. It's supposed to be, uh, I think, 6 to 10 pounds. I'm not sure. But it's warming up, and we'll check it here when it gets hot to see how it goes. All right, I got the car warmed up to temperature. Uh, I haven't got the oil light to come on yet, but it's uh, pretty much where it should be. And uh, right now, um, I got this off the internet, and you can see uh, for idle, the pressure should be about 10 PSI, full, full pressure at uh, curb idle speed. So um, even at, uh, at 3,000 RPM, it's uh, 45 to 75, so I'm gonna put my phone down real quick and uh, show you what I've got right now. And it's warmed up, and right now I am running 15 pounds uh, yeah, 15 pounds. So I'm gonna go in here and put it in gear. I'm gonna have to try to do this for the camera and all that good stuff. See if I can do it. All right, I'm gonna drop her down in gear. All right, she's down in gear. Now I'm gonna grab this out here. Uh, well, if this was just a little bit longer, it'd be great. Now that pressure right now is looking great. It is at uh, 10. Is it? It's at uh, two, four, six, eight. That would be about the 13 pounds of pressure right there. So that oil pump. Everything is looking great, so now all I've got to do is uh, let it uh, run here just a little bit longer to get this oil light to come on. If that oil light comes on and that pressure is up like that, then I know it's my sending unit. And hopefully this will help a lot of people out there that's having the same problem. It's like the doom of uh, death, you know, when you get your oil light coming on. Uh, nothing's come on yet, so that is good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of put this up on the glass. I'm going to take a cloth and hold that... Uh, gauge up here where I can actually watch it and watch that uh, light come on so let me go ahead and set that up and we'll watch this and if we get to see if we can get this light to come on all right I finally got that oil light to come on and uh, well it took a while and you can see it's blinking on and off I got it in gear right now if you're having the same symptoms uh, here's what I've discovered my oil pressure when it does that is right at let's see let's do this again eight pounds so I know it's the switch there's no way it's the oil pump and that engine's idling as low as I can get it. And the book calls for a curb idle about 10 uh, pounds of pressure. So uh, more than likely it is uh, the switch. It's weak. Um, I would suspect that oil pressure would probably go down a few more uh, numbers before that light would come on. But uh, if I turn the steering wheel, slow that engine down a little bit, and you can see that light comes on. It's blinking. Now the idle just came up just barely. Turn it back again, and there's a light blinking, and I am at uh, nine pounds of oil pressure. That oil pressure is okay. Yep, right there, the light's blinking. So there's the uh, issue: nine pounds of oil pressure. So more than likely, uh, it's the switch that's bad. So I am going to go ahead and put a new switch on it and drive it and see what happens. And uh, Hopefully it'll be okay, uh, but uh, if you're having this problem, see there's that light blinking. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit on it. Yeah, see? I'm at nine pounds pressure. So that answers a lot of questions. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off, let it cool down, and go ahead and order another uh, sending unit for it and uh, do another pressure check later on it and make sure she's going to be okay and I'll give you guys an update. I'll probably change the oil to put a little bit uh, heavier oil in it, maybe 10W30 because the oil in it right now is pretty uh, pretty nasty looking. It's not very clean. That'll help too. Alright, I'll give you guys an update a little bit later. Hey, a little bit of an update. Um, <clears throat> I went ahead and did some research and uh, found out that that uh, pressure sending unit is okay. Anything below 10 pounds, uh, when it gets down to 9, 8 pounds, it starts to uh, trip out light. So the light, so the light was okay, so I did, did a little research, and I thought, well, what about the oil? You know, I didn't want to go start ripping the engine apart because it didn't make sense why the motor sounded really good. So it turns out, I went and changed the oil, and you're not going to believe how bad the oil was. 
just nasty oil, almost water-like. So I went out and got an oil filter and got new oil at Walmart. I put some uh, 10W40 in it, which I think should be okay. You're not going to believe the difference in the oil pressure in this thing. Uh, the thing is warmed up now. I'll go ahead and start it up. And uh, you can see the temperature gauge is almost right where it was earlier. And uh, it's idling. And look at this oil pressure. What a difference it made. It rose that oil pressure up uh, almost uh, 20, 20 pounds. Remember before it was down around 10 or so, but now it's back up to almost 20 some pounds. And if I can drop this in gear real quick, I'll have to hold my other hand over here. And uh, right there it's idling. And look at the difference. I'm using. I'm at 20 pounds of pressure right now, so that oil pump, my bearings were okay, it turns out. Just dirty oil. It shows you what the uh, difference can be in an oil change, the oil pressure. So if you have any oil light issues, uh, coming up to light, blinking, etc., you might want to look at your oil first. Put some uh, good oil in it, and maybe just put a little heavier oil up where I live. It gets pretty cold. I, I could have done 10W30, but I figure you know, 10W40 uh, would be just fine. And in the mornings, if it's below zero or anything like that, really, really cold, uh, you just, when you start it in the morning, you want it to uh, idle for a while before you actually start, uh, you know, giving it a lot of gas and revving the engine up. Because that's, a lot of times, you can destroy your engine that way in the cold weather. But that oil pressure, boy, it, it really raised that oil pressure way up there in my light. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it back on, but I'm going to tinker with it tonight and see how it goes. And it's uh, right up where it should be temperature-wise. Amazing what a little bit of oil, fresh oil, will do. If you have any problems with your uh, oil light coming on, try an oil change first. But if your engine is sounding noisy when that oil light comes on, starts ticking and so forth, then you may have other issues. So uh, other than that, that's the end of the video right now. I'm not going to really uh, update it unless something major catastrophic happens. But it looks like that was my problem at, at that point. I'm glad I didn't have to go out and buy a, a sending unit. It would have cost me $20. But uh, right there, I mean, I can't, that's, looks like about uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, 17, 18 pounds of oil pressure at uh, idle, curb idle. That's, that's really good. That's actually above specs, what the book calls for. And you can see, I'm gonna see if I can drop it down in gear. Try to get it to go down, drop that idle speed a little bit. And it's holding right at 16 pounds, 16 pounds of pressure. So it looks like it will be okay. I'm sure if the temperature gets really, really hot, it'll probably drop down another pound or two, but I don't expect it to go below 10 pounds. All right, well, thanks for watching, everybody. That'll do it. So uh, hopefully if you're having any issues with your oil pressure, that'll help you out. Of course, my service engine light's back on. I got the P, uh, P0300, which I believe is my um, crank sensor getting bad. But I may make a video on that. But I'm going to have to go out on the road and test it a little bit. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, good luck. Like I said, right now it's still in drive. It is at max temp right now, normal temperature. And I'm holding... Uh, Two, four, sixteen, seventeen pounds of pressure. Great. <laughs> Live and learn, I guess. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching, and um, be careful out there working on your vehicles.